Welcome everybody to Thursday night scrap with your scraps scrap your scraps uh, it's crafty Chris here uh, just coming up with a little bit of a layout variation um, we're going to be using scrap papers and some doodads and things that might be in our collections um, the list will have been on the posting a little bit of paper for some journaling um, I'm going to be using a um, uh, Deckel um, cutter for some of the uh, sentiments and uh, journaling. And if you're interested in the deckel, you can get that deckel cutter from our our friends at Paper Crafters Workshop, and that's their information there. Just uh, if you're interested in purchasing that particular cutter, okay. Alrighty, so tonight we are going to get our hands into some um, paper crafting. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take, that's kind of an image of where I'm heading with this. I don't know if we'll end up in the same way, um, but it's all good because whatever we end up with, it'll be fabulous. So I'm just going to take all these off and the first thing I'm going to do is cut off my um, strip across the top of the paper so that I don't have the wrong size page when I'm finished. And as I've always said with your cutters, um, you have to know where your blade is, which side of the uh, uh, which side of the metal strip it's on, if it's on the left or right, so that you can make sure you're cutting um, with your paper line on the right side of the page. And take a big strip off that. You're going to keep the background because it's got some awesome looking wood on it. And there we go. That's my biggest cut for today. My, the rest of my cuts I'm going to probably be doing using my small trimmer which is a guillotine trimmer okay and you can also get that at paper crafters workshop this one I, I purchased with a home based company years and years ago all right so the first thing I want to do is I want to go around the outside edge of this with a bit of a very light black pen and I'm going to use a ruler for this one because I kind of want it to be pretty angular um, and as close to being um, accurate as possible so I'm going to use my I've got my marker which is one of those fine tip markers this is La pen drawing technical tool you can get those at paper crafters I'm going to give myself a half inch so I'm going to use my mat to line up that half inch with my ruler and the reason I'm using a, ru a metal ruler that has a little bit of a lip on it is because I don't want to cut the tip of my marker so the ruler itself will sit against the metal edge of the marker because sometimes you can cut that by accident whoops there we go giving myself that half inch if I wanted an 18 inch ruler I could have used an 18 inch ruler there we go. Now I'm going to give myself, whoops, might as well bring it all the way down here. I'm going to give myself that half inch so I won't go past drawing it, past that half inch on the page. And I'm going to go right to the half inch here turn it around, line it up. It takes a bit of fussing to line it up and get it even. We're going to make sure that we're still doing that half inch. Alright, joining that line, not going past the half inch on this point. Alright, doing another lining up. There we go, lining up that half inch. There we go. And 
and if my corners aren't meeting it's fine I can make that happen after and we're going to line this up one more time making sure I do my half inch So this gives me a border um, to play with. I like to have sometimes a, an angular um, mark to, okay, sorry, I have to think for a minute, make sure I don't go over, there we go, alrighty. And I'm just gonna touch up where it's missing make sure they touch okay if I've gone over a little, a little it's not a major headache or problem I'm going to run my uh, paper my wood grain paper left to right because my strips are going to be top to bottom and so that just makes it a little bit uh, easier so now I have a frame to work within and I'm going to go use that frame and go over that frame on a number of things so that um, the picture itself is uh, going to have some flow to it. Um, now as far as what we're going to do for pictures here, I've decided there's two ways you can you can use this. You can do one of those um, panoramic photos straight across or you can do two of the get my photos four by uh, three by fours. Um, I don't know that I or you could I wouldn't put two four by sixes because they're just a little too big. So I'm getting out my my uh, cards here and four by three. Okay, there they are. So I'm just going to flip over to my four by threes. They may be a little bit too small. I may do some unusual photos for this one. We'll see what happens. So the idea is to have either photos going across the page this way and I find those to be a little bit too small. So I'm going to turn them and maybe put three photos across the page just to fill in a little bit more of that space. Okay. I'm going to line up my my grid mat to my grid or my background to my grid because I want the action to sort of happen in this area. So I want to have about three inches from the top before the first strip of color comes down and maybe two inches from the bottom. So I'm going to work with three, four, uh, three by four photos. I am not going to mat these. I want the photos to stand on their own. Um, so we'll just have to wait to the end once we're done everything to see how it all lays out. Alrighty, so I've asked you to get strips of paper in particular colors um, and in patterns and we are going to start with our first strip of paper. I have tons of strips of paper that are just cutoffs. Um, the first one is probably about, well it's almost two inches, it's an inch and just under three quarters. So let's make that an inch and three quarters even. So I'm going to get my cutter and I'm going to line it up with my three quarter inch line. There we go. I'm going to start in the middle because it is a very thin piece that I'm cutting off. I want to make sure that I don't end up with a frayed edge instead of a piece cut off. So that's how you can avoid that by starting in the center of the strip. Alright, now this strip I want to be three inches down and two inches up so that's five inches so I want this to be a seven inch strip. So because I don't happen to have a seven inch uh, cutting mat or small cutter. I'm just going to do that seven inch here. So my red, I'm starting with seven inches. 
this piece is a discard and this is going to start about three inches from the uh, bottom and two or three inches from the top and two inches from the bottom and I'm going to give myself a half inch from the side so that's about where my first piece is going to lay mm, I could have done that a little longer let's see that'll ah, be fine alrighty so I'm going to hang on to this because I may have need it after all so now let's stick that down Just going to make sure my paper is square. I'm going to eyeball it because I tend to do that. Give myself a half inch from well, maybe a quarter inch from that side. There we go. And it's laid down. Now, the next color I want to use is my turquoise pattern, open pattern. And I want to get I want to keep most of the purples and blues. I'm going to try to avoid this because we've got oranges coming on the other side. This one I want to have the same size, but we're going to make this thinner. This one is going to be an inch and a quarter. So again, I'm going to trim it down because it's a little big. I'm going to take it off this side line it up with my inch and a quarter on my cutter and I'm going to start in the center again because it's right close to the edge so close that <laughs> I have to play with it a little bit there we go cut down whoops that could be tricky and cut up there we go okay so this is inch and a quarter and now we are going to cut that seven inches again so maybe I'm not using my small cutter seven inches again um, hmm. turn it the other way get more of the red than the orange there we go there we are and all these other pieces that are just cut off, I am going to put those in my scraps because I like to be able to use up all of my stuff. So I'm going to move this about a half inch up. So if I'm going to eyeball it there, give it about a half inch. So it's going to go up a half inch on my paper. that down make sure the pink is at the top again as I said keeping it a half inch above uh, out there eyeballing it tucking it nice and tight to the edge of the red without going over there we go and then my next piece is going to be the turquoise pattern background so I've got um, a piece of uh, turquoise with white. I could do white with turquoise, but I think it's a little light. I need to put some base. Now this one, I'm going to make a full two inches. It already is a full two inches, so I'm going to keep that and I'm going to cut it um, hmm, seven inches again. Seven inches. There we go. Put that away. Yeah, that was seven. Oof, for a minute there, I wasn't sure. Okay, so this one is actually going to go about a quarter of an inch um, from the bottom edge of the red where we started the red. So we're going to line this up. Get some adhesive on the back of this and of course you can choose whatever patterns and colors you want to work with this is just what I had in my stash 
your stash is going to be different and that's all good alrighty so we're going about a half inch down there okay now our next color is either a wood green or a brown and oh you know what I've I think I'm going to change this slightly I think what I'm going to do is I am going to give a little eighth of an inch space that's what I want to do so we're going to give an eighth of an inch space and this is going to be half inch with an eighth of an inch over there we go and then this is going to be a quarter of an inch with an eighth of an inch over whoops there we go there that makes me feel a little better there we go okay and now this is going to be two inches by seven inches is uh no this one is going to be thinner this one i think we're going to have as an inch because it's quite dark um so i'm going to cut that at an inch i may have to do some shuffling around at the end so i'll put it in my cutter and there we go Keep that other piece for later. Make this seven inches. Beautiful. Okay. And now this is gonna be on the same line as this one is. Eyeballing it, of course. With an eighth of an inch space. of an inch space and starting at the same edge and just to to keep it sort of all on the level there we go and there we go alrighty then our next one is going to be the orange, and the orange is going to be a two inch, and this is a nice two inch measurement, and seven inches again. Whoop! Don't want to cut that. Seven inch. There we go. And we are going to put this matching uh, the second one so matching that pattern turquoise one Whoop. so I'm going to get my ruler just easier than eyeballing give it that eighth of an inch oops there we go making sure it's even at the top okay and then we have this light color now I may have to move things over slightly or maybe not okay so that's gonna go half inch in this should be fine so this pale one is behind a lot of things so I'm not worried about how thick this is so we're going to make this um, a one inch and we're going to let it meet both pieces because I like what's going on here so I'm going to cut and now this is not seven inches so I'm going to have to put some at the top and some at the bottom and my picture of course is going to cover it um, so I need to have this one inch and this is what you can do if you don't have the full strips you can just have them on top and bottom 
as you know the pictures are going to cover it all right now this i'm going to cut in half or thereabouts because it's the top that i'm most interested in where it lies the top and bottom all right so and this i'm going to put right against this orange piece and it is going to be matching this brown okay so we're going to see a bit of it at the bottom and it's going to be right up against the edge of the orange so trying to get that to match there we go and then it's going to be matching at the top and because it's under a bunch of things I'm not worried about how much adhesive is going in there because I know that uh, it will all work out there we go and then our last piece is should be one and a quarter inches hmm alrighty so we are going to make that one inch now I think three quarters of an inch is what we're going to make that let me just measure Sorry, it takes me a second to one, two, three, four, five. So seven eighths of an inch is what this is going to be, just so that it all fits in properly. Seven eighths of an inch. So that's that one line, two lines before. If you have a sixteenth of an inch ruler. There we go. Those are my strips and we're going to cut that seven inches. There we go. Alrighty. And this will put a little more adhesive on than the last piece because it shows more and it is going to match the turquoise if I'm not nope the orange the orange hmm. yes we'll have it match the orange there we go because it's where the words are going to be so actually I'll do it down here it's easier for me to manage right up against that side beautiful awesome so we have our side showing on either side there we have all this going on our um photos hang on let me get those i've got those out already our photos are going to go across here doot, doot it okay so far so good alrighty now let's get to some decorating so this bottom corner called calls for a large doily and all I have is this gold doily I don't really like the color so I'm minimizing that by putting a large coordinating flower in the center of it and it brings down that flashy goldness a little bit so I am going to put some adhesive on my flashy gold and I'm just going to place my flower somewhere in the middle of that okay and then I can stick my doily down and doilies are, ugh, I was just going to say doilers are kind of complicated as you can see but nice because I'm going to trim part of it off so that 
works just fine, but it means that I'm going to switch around my flower a little bit because I'm going to lose that side anyway. We are going to do that. Awesome. And we're going to use glue uh, for the, this, the top edges of the doily because it will break as you just saw. They're very fussy. So just a couple of dots of glue to help keep it down. And you really only have to worry about one half of it because the other half is going to be missing. And we are going to have this sit above the line that we created. And the flower is probably going to be like centered in this space that we've created with the lines. And because mine has words on it, I'm going to try and keep it straight. There we go. Alrighty. Just hold that down for a second, let that glue stick, and I will uh, trim that off after. Let me put a tiny bit of glue right there. That piece needs to stay good. Alrighty, so there's one corner. The next corner is the corner that has all the flowers on it. So I have uh, sort of pre-arranged them the way I thought I would like to see them and taken a picture of it so that I don't waste your time um, while we are online. Okay, so let me just open this right up. So I always do this. When I'm playing and laying things out, I always um, try to... Sorry. <laughs> Let's do this again. There we are. And I'm going to focus in at the top. I try to throw things together like I would like to see them. And then I have it in front of me for when I actually go to put it together. So... I am going to leave this die cut uh, butterfly raw, but I am going to sand down um, the side because this has a little bit of um, a, a little bit of a I don't know the sticky bit where it was attached to a much larger page when it was cut. So I don't like those. So I'm just I'm just taking a file and I'm just filing it down. There. Now they are gone. Now it's left me with two raw edges. So I am just going to take oops. I'm just going to take a pencil. There's my pencil and darken the edge a little bit. It's not the same color as the edge is, but that will take my eye off of that funny looking color. There we go. All right, so now this guy is going to go up in the very corner and over the actual um, border that we created. Now, I, I'm going to keep him flat because there are other things and he is going to get glued down rather than um, sticky taped down because um, it's very awkward to get sticky tape on these wood, these, uh, they're not wood, they're chipboard elements. So I'm just going to put him on an angle in that top corner, overlapping both of the margins that we created. All right, then my next thing is to place down the leaves that are going behind my flowers. And I just had some stickers um, that had some similar coloring to what I was using with all of my other parts. And I kind of have it going a little bit like that because it's going to tuck under the other flowers that are going on. And it's overlapping part of the um, 
paper that we have down. Then the next thing I've got is this flower, which I want to have come about there. And I want to have another flower that's going to fit in there. So I have to adjust my flowers a little. And then I want to have this flower go over top of that bud. And I think that's it for flowers, but I do have a couple of stickers I want to stick in the middle of things. So this has got red, red, pink, and orange in it. So that just adds an element, and it's nice if I get it in the center. There we go. And in this one, I'm sticking in um, a similar one, but a darker orange and darker pink. Now, just to give those a little oomph. This doesn't seem to want to stick on there. Alrighty. Oops. Now it's stuck, but it's not perfectly centered. Oh well. So we'll put it this way so the bigger part is down towards the bottom. And then that makes you feel like it's looking up to the sun. That's the cool thing about playing around with this stuff is you don't have to be stuck with any particular way. Now I want to put a big flower down from this grouping. So let's get this grouping stuck down. I am going to use glue dots for these flowers and I'm going to use small glue dots because the whole flower doesn't need to be stuck down, just the center. So we got our red glue dot on the back. Make sure you rub it nicely so it comes off. And that's going to fit right over top of that bud. There we go. And then this guy I'm going to put down on the other side. The blue dot. These are just random flowers I have laying around in my spring and summer collection of scraps. Now I'm going to cover up the butterfly a little bit and I want to go over. There we go. So that I have the butterfly covered and then my big guy is going to go in there like that. So let's get the big guy stuck down. It doesn't need more than a small dot. Alrighty, now I am going to make sure that it's closer to this edge than that edge, so it looks like it's looking towards the sun. There we go. So we have our vine coming out here and our flowers and our butterfly. We need one big leaf. This is a sticker, so I don't have to mess with it too much and I'm going to stick that sticker right there and it's going to come to where that line is being hidden by the flower. There we go. So there's our second corner and then I'm just going to do a tiny little bit down at the bottom of this um, so that it kind of melds everything all together and I'm thinking about Got another small butterfly. Again, I need to sand off those little, I don't know what to call those, uh, tag, taggy bits or leftover attacher bits. <laughs> lots, of, lots of words, but nothing very descriptive. And I'm going to put my pencil on there to minimize how white that has become. There we go. It's back to normal. So in this area I was thinking of having at the bottom here two flowers, two leaves, and or th two or three flowers. Two flowers and two leaves and a butterfly just to kind of give everything some balance. All right, and then the title will go up there. Alrighty, 
So let's stick those down. I had an extra flower. Do I want an? No, I don't want an extra flower. That can go away for the next layout. All right. So again, with small pop dots, I'm going to stick down these flowers. This is going to be at the top edge. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, around there, a little over. Okay, and then I'm gonna put another sticky dot on the bottom edge. And I'm gonna actually tuck this under because I don't want it to be, um, I want the red one to show more than the orange one. Okay, now we're going to put a leaf towards the top and a leaf coming from the bottom. Oops, got to get over top of the paper that's there too. There we go, and underneath that leaf. Fussy, oopsie. There we go. And over there, there we are. And our butterfly, we're going to glue. A bit of glue on the butterfly. The smaller they are, the harder they are to glue. But little dots seem to work best. There we go. And this guy is just going to be overlapping the leaf a little bit. Maybe there? No. I'm going to put him here. Hmm. There or here or there. No, don't like him there. No, I'm going to have him over the leaf where I originally planned it to be. I'm just afraid he's going to get in the way of the pictures there. Well, let's put a picture there and see. Oh, we could just fit it in. Alrighty, if we have it very close, there we go. All right. Now, my title is called Choose Joy. And luckily, I have, let's see if it's even, sort of, no, it's not even. Okay, great. So I'm going to use my ruler. There are tools you can use um, to uh, help you line things up. But I, because I have this ruler that has this little space, I can uh, line up my title. I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'll show you how to do this. So if you want things to stay straight, just use your uh, ruler and just use like a quarter inch of your ruler to stick your words on. Just on the tips of the ruler. Don't stick it on your paper, otherwise you'll never get it off, of course. Choose. Want to make sure that we have nice spacing and that we're right up to that edge. Choose. Got a little hair there. I do have pets, so this is part of having pets. You have hair in your layouts. Choose. Okay, that looks pretty good. Got a little bit of shadow so you can't really see. Okay, 
Now Joy I'm going to put on separately. I am not using any of these little bitty bits, uh, except maybe one of the little hearts. Alrighty. So we are going to go across the top and I'm going to stand so that I can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to line up the top of my paper with my grid, line up my ruler with my grid, and just make sure I'm not touching that leaf. Now I'm going to press all the upper parts of the word down onto the paper. And then holding the word like so. If you have another ruler, it's not a bad idea to use it just to give even pressure. You're going to snap this up. And then all the letters stay where they're supposed to be. And you can just carefully press them down. Now things like C's, you might want to make sure that they stay in E's. And there you go. There's your title. Sometimes I find S's need readjusting too. There we go. Alright, so uh, the reason I had the black outline is I had to somehow bring black into this because I knew the title I wanted to use was black. But we are going to adjust the title. Uh, now, for the word joy, this is all one piece, so I don't need to worry about lining it up. I just need to decide where I'm going to put it. Choose joy, choose joy. Hmm, good question. Where do I want to see that on the page? In the center. No, I don't. I think I'm going to put it over here. And I know that I'm going to use one of these small hearts for the dot, so I have to have room for that. But I also have to have room for my photo. So I'm just going to place this down where I think it might go. And Put my photos on again. Two, three. Yeah, see that's a little bit. That'll be a little bit over top of the photo, but I don't mind that. So I'm going to put a little piece of plastic underneath that end of that joy. First I'm going to make sure I am lining it up. Put my Heart dot on top. There we go. It's kind of like they're attached. I like how that's all laying out. That looks fine. And this is going to go under the bottom so that I can stick my photo underneath once I have my photo. So it won't it won't be an issue for lining up if we do this lining up that's a bit of an issue but I don't mind it going over top so that's good alrighty so there's my choose joy now I don't like how dark the black is so I am going to use, um, I have in my stash here somewhere, a gold wink of Stella. And I just need to know where it is. Oh, there it is, behind my sharpener. So a gold wink of Stella. Because we have gold here, having gold elsewhere doesn't isn't going to be an issue so I just shake it up and if it needs priming I, I push lightly to prime some ink into the barrel 
Otherwise, I just go on. And what this does is it just brings down the look of the dark black a little bit. So it's less black, and that's what I'm going for. I don't want it to be so stark, because I still don't know what pictures are going on here. I may have babies, so then I don't want to have black in the title. I want it to be slightly muted. There we go. And you're going to go over your words twice. So you're going to do all the words and then you're going to go back to the beginning and start again. Because as you uh, put ink over top of ink, it realigns all the little glitter bits and uh, gives it a more uniform look after two runs at it. Leaving it at one, you could, but it's, it looks a little random when it dries. So I like to do two. Two runs. Here we go. As you can see, you can plan all you want for layouts, but as you're actually doing the layouts, they sometimes change. And then you do something else. Okay, going back here, making sure I don't touch the wet stuff. Doing one more layer over top, smoothing it out, making it a little more organized looking there we go it's hard to see but I'll put it up to the camera as soon as I'm done a little bit more in my the tip of my pen the second time is much quicker because you're really just trying to organize it There we go. Oh, my phone is very busy today, or tonight. It's today, actually, because I'm videotaping this in advance, as I've told you. I don't have the ability to do it at night at the moment. So this is not live, but it is today. And I'm happy to answer any questions, and I'm still looking for my 100 people. Um, and I'm still going to do a draw when I have my 100 people. Alrighty, so there's Choose. Let me lift it up to you so you can see it. It just tones down that black. It makes it a little less black, and it's not overly um, fussy. Now, I want to trim off this corner. So I'm going to get my big scissors. You all want to have big scissors to do any large trimming. Not small scissors because you'll find that you won't get as smooth a line. There we go. Alrighty, so there we go. Alright, so just to finish off, we are going to um, put our photos in here and we're just going to put on a few spots for um, journaling. So that's with your craft paper and we're just going to do a little bit of trimming. Um, I'm going to move my layout so I can do the trimming with you. And basically, three eighths of an inch is what we're looking for. But I first have to make this edge um, uh, tattered. So I'm using my deckel trimmer. There we go. And now I want to create. Okay. So I'm going to eyeball this. 
I want to create about a 3 8 of an inch uh, journal spot. There we go. Yeah, not bad eyeballing. And I'm going to make about one, two, three, four, five of them just to have. Two I'm going to place down and then two I'm going to wait until I have my photo. So that's one, two, three, four. One more. Once I have my photo, then I can decide what I'm going to do. Duck will cut her away. Alrighty. Well, actually, maybe not duck will cut her away because these have straight edges. So you have a choice of straight edges or duckle edges. So let me show you what a duckle edge looks like for your journaling. It would look. So we'll duckle one edge. There we go. So this is our straight edge on either end, and this is our deckle edge on either end. I kind of like the deckle edge. So I'm just going to line these all up and do one fell swoop and finish all four pieces. And as I said, if you're looking for a deckle trimmer, you can go to these people up here. So please take note of that if you need to find a deckle trimmer. Make sure these are more or less even when I got them in there. there. Oh, that one didn't go so well, but oh, I'll pull it off. So there's my deco edged two of them, and now the other two. Oh, they fit right in this time. And flip it over. There we go. Alrighty. So, pulling back my layout. Whoops. Seems I've got two of those there. So, here's my layout all lined up. Underneath, I am going to have two spots for journaling and I like to do a little black line around it so the trick to lining these is to make sure that um, you do not look at the tip of your pen you're looking at the edge of the paper so just make sure you got a good grip and you're looking at the edge of the paper if you have to take your arm off no problem there we go. Looking at the edge of the paper again. If you need to take your arm off, no problem. And then just finishing off the edge. This is my routine way of doing journal spots. And we're going to have that journal spot start just, if we can, just under here and across the paper. So I'm going to stick that down. Don't know what I'm going to say yet. Got to wait for the paper or the pictures rather, and then I'll have a better idea. So let's just tuck you under there and line up more or less square eyeballing. All right, so there's my first journal spot. I'm going to cut one smaller. Just a little under half with my deckel trimmer. Now a deckel trimmer has a straighter edge at the top and a deckel edge at the bottom. Straighter edge so that you have some lead into, like when you're doing uh, um, tags and things, you don't want the sides to look always the same, so this gives you straight and then more to deckle down here. I always end up using the bottom end here because I love deckle everything. But that one I just cut and it reminded me that that top edge is straighter than uh, the bottom edge. 
Alrighty, so I have two choices. I can have this one coming there like that, or I can have a smaller one like that. Don't really like the smaller one. I'm going to go for this one. And I'm just going to sit it right along the edge of the orange. All right. And I'm going to keep these pieces with my layout so that when I'm finished, I am able to um, add more or less. And if I were going to add more, I would add it in the top here. So smaller pieces and in the top and maybe one across the bottom. Um, but really it depends on the photos and how much you want to say. I'm just going to lift up and whoops. I'm going to lift up just under there my, so that my thing is straight. Eyeball it. There we go. There. And that's done. Alrighty. So here is our finished layout. Get that out of the way. And there you are. There you have it. Is that not gorgeous? It is gorgeous. And then once you get the pictures on it, it's even more gorgeous. Ta-da! Beautiful! All right, so I am going to say goodbye for now. I'll see you next Thursday with something else, and enjoy your week. Bye!